Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, merciful, I testify that there is no deity to worship except Allah, and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave servant and messenger. Um, I didn't put my face on this because really I'm not putting any, any imagery on here for two reasons. One is that the message is more important than the messenger in this case. And secondly, well, it creates a smaller file to upload and for you to download and listen. So, sisters, understand this. A man, Shahid Sabur, made the post about the importance of modesty. And I know uh, I looked and I saw the comments and this is what I saw. A bunch of our sisters from our faith and from our ethnicity taking issue with his reminder that did not call out anybody by name, that was not meant to embarrass anybody, and it was meant uh, uh, to give good advice. I want to start by saying this. I'm on your side. That's why I'm telling you this, even though you're not going to like it, because I'm on your side. I don't know any of you. So we're not enemies and we're not friends. I'm just one of your brothers in faith that wants to see better for us. And maybe a lot of you don't understand the implications of the comments that you left but you should, and I'm going to tell you what it is. There are multiple reasons that I left the United States and came out here to live in this country I'm living in now. It's a Middle Eastern Arabian Gulf nation. I'm here working. Um, I'm not making a hell of a lot of money, but I'm saving more than I would ever be able to save in the States. White folks were one reason I left. The lack of Islam and the attitude towards Islam was another reason that I left. Um, I didn't expect to make much, so I can't really say that that was much of the reasons, but I did figure that job security was another reason. Um, pretty much I was running from the persecution of the non-Muslims and the racist over there, but there was another thing I was running from too. You see, I was leaving behind, uh, the attitude of the Western woman because I wanted to live a nice domestic life. And um, I knew that I couldn't do that over there. It wasn't going to happen. Because the sisters like you that left those comments trying to castigate Shahid Sabur for leaving you that reminder in the first doggone place. This is not an attack on anybody. What he uh, said was not an attack on any individual. It was a gentle reminder. And many of you were now saying, why does he have to come talk about us? Why don't he go, go and deal with the men and, and tell them, well, here's the reason why. Shahid and I both can have these conversations with brothers face to face. We don't have any business going up and getting in your face so we can't have these conversations with you all face to face like we can have with brothers. So what is the way we have to do it? Electronically. That's how we see what you're saying. That's how we see what the patterns are. And that's the right way to deal with it. We're not up in your face. And let's let's take a uh, st uh, let's stop for a second and take a look at Shahid Sabur. He's not up in your DMs. Don't tell me he is. I know he's not, because if he was in any of your DMs uh, trying to talk inappropriately, you would have told us you would have made public comments about it and you would have told his wife. There would have been a scandal about this by now if that was the case. It wasn't. So here he is not being thirsty, as y'all call it, which really just means interested. But here he is not showing thirst in your DMs and on your pages. Behaving appropriately, he gives this advice and y'all want to take issue. That's what it comes down to. I'm not going to sit up here and say that, you know, the, the, the white sisters that come into the dean are necessarily any better. I just don't see a lot of them. That's all. So I can't really make much of a comparison because it's so rare and so few as far as I know. At least they were when I left the U.S. But what I know is my people. And when you become Muslim, it is this kind of reminder about which you're supposed towards which you should be humble and fuck the shuck up because he doesn't have any bad reasons for giving you this. This is not a case of him doing what the Arabs do to us a lot which is say the right thing but for the wrong reason. What wrong reason does he have to say what he said? See, when an Arab says something to, to all of us like, well, you know, uh, we're all slaves of God or Bilal was black, Khalas, and, you know, there's no racism in Islam. They're saying statements that are technically true, but they're saying them for the right, the wrong reason, which is, uh, nigga, could you please stop calling us on our white supremacist ideas? 
That's the real reason behind it. Don't talk about it. Don't confront it. This is how we are. We prefer uh, pale shades and white people over you. Even though we don't hate you, we still prefer them over you. And please don't uh, confront us about this. Okay, well, see, that's the wrong reason to say the right thing. But he doesn't have a wrong reason to which any of us can point. So what happens if I sit up and I give a reminder? You're going to come up with reasons to disregard it. What this means is you want to get on pages and say ignorant stuff, even though men may be able to see what you're saying. And even though you may be exposing too much, even to other women. That's what that means. If you take an issue with him saying it, we can go to other brothers and we can say to them, look, we can't be messing with married women, sending DMs to married women like this or trying to holler at married women. We can say this to, to guys that we know in person and they can say it to others that they know. We can spread this. We don't have business getting up in your faces personally to say this, so we don't. That's it. This is the right way. He said the right thing for the right reason and even in the right manner. Now, to the sisters that said uh, to the sisters that did not take issue. Great. Could you please holler at your homegirls and give them some advice? Because this is not coming from a place of, of some sort of wickedness or some sort of evil. Now, I've seen him in real life before. We didn't uh, we actually didn't have a chance to chat. I saw him before I found him on Facebook. When I saw him in person, I didn't know him. But what I did see was uh, <laughs> what I did see was straightforward behavior. He prayed. That was it. And then, that, and then later on, I see him at the next prayer. And that's it. I know scandal when I see it. Whatever sins he's got, they are private. That means they don't involve any of you. I knew some brothers. One of them uh, tried something that had an effect on my life. I knew brothers that were like, that were like that. They had they were scandalous uh, in words in our community. They did not hide it as well as women did, but the. What I'm seeing now is that, that many of you want to take issue with this and understand when I say to my students over here, do not cheat. Do not look to the right or the left during a test. Do not look at your neighbor's paper. Do not look at your neighbor and talk to him. Don't give hand signals to your neighbor during a test. Don't pull out other books during a test. Don't use your phones. Matter of fact, you're supposed to leave your phones in the car. When they start protesting these things, I automatically know this guy wants to cheat on the test. When I say to them, when you come in on test day, don't sit in the back of the room and leave all the empty chairs in the front. You sit from the front going towards the back. You don't leave an empty chair in front of you. When I go into a classroom on test day and I've got the test in my hand, but the students have they are crowded in the back and the front is darn near empty. I already know every student that did not sit in the front wants to cheat. That's why they didn't do it. Every student that tries to tell me that cheating is not really cheating is just help. They love to say that. I know this student wants to cheat. Every time a student comes into a class for which their English skill uh, does not match the level of that class. I know this student already cheated to get to where they are. These are things I know right off the bat. When I tell students, listen, uh, you're going to have to do this assignment and it is going to involve some research. And they start coming to me and they say, doctor, you're too difficult. You need to give us topics that are easy. I know what it is. They don't want to research new information. That's it. I look at what they're protesting. They don't say, well, we have many tests this week. Can we do this one uh, two weeks after uh, two weeks from now after we finish all of these other tests? That's not what I'm hearing. None of that. When when students, when I tell them don't talk to each other during a test and they say, doctor, what if we just ask how much time is left? I know right now, right off the bat, this kid wants to cheat. He has to try to talk to somebody else during a test. He can't shut his mouth and keep his eyes on his own paper. He's trying to make excuses ahead of time, looking for some permission that he can use with uh, with which to disguise his cheating. It's plain as day. If he's not a cheater, he does not take issue with it. I've never had a student that did not take issue with this and then turned around and cheated later. I've had students that uh, were quiet about it. They tell their friends to ask and then they cheat later. I've had students that um, I put it like this. No student that did not cheat 
ever took issue with this and the students who had studied previously to where the class was now easy for them did not take issue with this and protested. They did not do it. Those who have good intentions don't get angry about reminders given unless they have evidence that the reminder was given for the wrong reason. That's the only exception I know of. If there's evidence and there is no evidence of this. So when he gives you a reminder like this, understand he can give brothers these reminders face to face and in private. When he gives reminders like this for the sisters, understand this ain't no man with a bad intention. Because a dirty man is not going to tell women to have shame. That goes against uh, his dirtiness. So fuck the shuck up. Take the advice, say thank you, and spread the advice. Don't even just take it yourself, spread it to other sisters. Because sisters, when you come along and you say things that men need to do differently, believe me, I'm going to look. And if I don't see evidence that you're saying the right thing for the wrong reason, I'm either not going to say anything or I'm going to say thank you, tip my hat. <laughs> not only am I going to implement it because you reminded me, I'm going to go and spread it to other men. If there's no evidence that you're saying the right thing for the wrong reason. Now, when some of y'all say, well, you brothers need to get up on your game. Uh, when I, what I mean by that is when I hear some of y'all saying that we need to, you know, make more money and things like that. I'm not going to spread that because we're Muslim. We're black heterosexual men. And well, y'all are in America. I left. I used to spy on masses, grandkids, and I know how they think. If you are black and heterosexual and you're a man they want you to be poor now if you add to that you're muslim you're going to face that it's it's if they know that you're going to face that so that being said um if i hear something like that like an, then what i'm I, I may hear okay i just don't want to have to deal with poverty and be patient with it at all but i'm not going to say to god why don't you get rid of this test i'm gonna look at the man and say well what are you doing you trifling mother cuss word that's what I might hear. But if I hear them saying things like stop living off of your wives, then I would say, OK, well, yeah, that's true. However, this problem also fixes itself because a man that lives off of his wife for a while will be a divorcee soon. She's going to leave him. I know about that. I've seen uh, men wind up divorced for less than that. So I already know a man lifting off of her, she going to bounce soon. And he knows it. But if you're given advice and it is it, it all it is is good advice and there's no evidence of a bad intention for this good advice. I'm not going to trip. And most grown men wouldn't. Matter of fact, some grown men would say, look, are you all right? Do you know someone is going through something and they need some help? This can happen sometimes. <laughs> but. Y'all got to watch this because a lot of sisters are not out here getting offended because he's up here giving you good advice. And what's happening is that a lot of them have to suffer in silence because, frankly, you all that had something to say about it. You are the major part of the reason I left the U.S. A aside from the persecution of Muslims in general, y'all are a major part, because what I realized was if I wanted to live a good domestic life as a husband, it was not going to happen over there. Because the ones of you that had something to say, maybe you outnumber the ones who don't. Maybe you don't outnumber them, but at, among the single ones, you outnumber the ones who don't have something to say. What I had came to understand was that you all are going to be the majority of the ones that are out there available, not married now. So my pickings were going to be limited mostly to you. And I was like, no, I'm not dealing with this. That's a bad uh, situation for anybody's religion. So I'm bouncing. I'm gone. I'm not sitting up saying that, that the West is a hell and the East is a paradise. Having lived in what you might call the East, uh, depending on what your definition is. I know it's not a paradise. I just told you what I got to tell my students. I know the women are spoiled. Even though I don't teach the women, I know that they ain't about much because they raise these little spoiled guys that I got to teach at times. They'll sit up and take uh, 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 they'll come and try to defend the one that cheated. But then when they need help from someone that did not cheat, when they need a good doctor or they need a good lawyer, they need somebody that did not cheat. All of a sudden uh, they want to talk about how bad the cheating issue is. 
But when it's their brother or their son that cheated, oh, it's, you're, you're being too harsh. So I know they ain't worth nothing either to a certain extent. But when advice like this is given, they either just don't think about it or they turn the TV off, but they don't have negative reactions to positive advice and positive intentions. And even now, some of you going to sit up and say, well, who are you and how you know his intentions? <laughs> well, OK, never mind. But understand this, too. Um, you may not realize this, ladies, but you're running your men off. I'm, I'm talking about you, the Muslima of our ethnicity. You are running the men off. The ones of you that had something to say, the ones that didn't or the, the ones who said thanks for the advice. Hey, look, no, you know, beef here. Appreciate that. Or the ones that didn't say anything at all, never commented and I never saw anything you wrote. You're not chasing your men away. But then again, usually you're probably in either engaged or you're going to be married. Uh, you're either married now or you will soon be married. That's usually what the case is. If that's what you were looking for, maybe you don't want to, but you're not taking offense either. But. It, you, that, but in, in general, that pretty much still means you're unavailable. That's really what that comes down to. So since what's available are going to be those of you with the neck rolling and the eye rolling, the finger snapping and I don't want to hear this stuff type of attitude, you are running the men off right now. What's going on is black men in general, Muslim and non-Muslim are discussing the importance of getting passports. Partially. To get away from you and partially to get away from Massa's grandson. They're pretty much saying that we got to bounce. Now, I didn't hear a whole lot of talk of repatriation when I was a youngster as part of the black conscious movement. I heard of it, but not much. Very few people that were doing it. Kwame Tory was an exception. But what I'm hearing now is brother saying, you know what? We... Uh, we can't we're not going to be able to find wives. The ones that just want girlfriends are saying we can't find girlfriends that are worthwhile. And the ones that are looking for wives are saying we're not going to be able to find wives that are worthwhile. Now, everybody heard about what Lizzo did. I'm all the way over here and I heard about Lizzo's antics. I didn't even know who Lizzo was. This is how I found out about her. That that attitude and that lack, the lack of modesty and attitude are what are driving these dudes away. A few days after that, I started to hear and see more African-American men saying, this is why we got to get passports. This is what's out there. Lizzo is everywhere. Because when you're looking at the pool of the single ones, they're all, many of them are Lizzo. Not only will they do this ignorant stuff, but they're going to they're going to swear that what they're doing is fine, is right, and they should be allowed to do it. But we as men, well, goodness gracious, if we simply say, how are you doing? Are you available? We're dogs and predators and thirsty and everything else. I heard a man recently say and he had a Muslim name, so I, I didn't ask him what his faith was. I don't even know him. I just had I read his quote, so I didn't get a chance to ask him, but I heard him say that a whore in Thailand or Colombia or the Philippines is better than a wife from the West. I heard him say this. Well, I read him say this. He was talking about you. I don't want you to be that woman that they're talking about. I don't know any of you. You don't know me. I'm just a brother that's telling you some good advice so that it doesn't have to be this way. I'm gone. I'm already married. I don't gain anything personally if you take this advice. Nothing. I'm already married. I'm, I'm not available now. I'm not going to go back and live in the U.S. voluntarily. God forbid. I seek refuge in Allah from that. This is this will benefit you if you take it. And if you do marry later, it will benefit the husband. If you have kids, it will benefit the kids. Everybody but me will benefit if you take it. So you can't use my personal grudge or any personal reasons as a motive to discount what I'm saying. Either you're going to take it or you're going to pay the price for not taking it. And I'm not going to know whichever one it is. Shahid may or may not know about some of you. But best believe if you 
don't take the advice. Later on, you're not going to be able to point to him and say anything about it. And as a matter of fact, um, if you fight him about this, you might be giving him your good deeds. It's up to God. Allah may decide, you know what, for every letter you typed, like you had something to say about it, like he was wrong, I'm going to take some good deeds and give them to him. And if you run out and Allah feels like doing this because of what you said, because, you know, he could if he chooses. So if he's doing this and and then you run out of good deeds and Allah's going to say now, OK, you got no good deeds left and we're going to put some of his bad deeds on you because I'm transferring good deeds and you ain't got none. So here goes some of his bad deeds and not on him anymore. Not on you. Congratulations. Would you like that? But regular or extra crispy since you didn't want to cover it up in the public. And many of you aren't even you may not even be doing this type of stuff. But when you want to take up an attitude with what he's saying and you didn't do it, then you were defending the guilty. And in that case, you wind up becoming guilty because you're not defending and uh, you're not defending an accused individual because you think that they're innocent. In this case, you were now defending the wrong act itself. Even though it's wrong and that in itself is indefensible. I don't want to really go on too long about this. Um, I meant no harm. Like I said, I'm on your side. So uh, I hope that this has been a benefit. And I hope one day that what I said will no longer be true. Thank you for listening. Salam alaikum.